Hi, everyone. I'm Surya, and today I'll be talking about our work towards optimal output sensitive click listing or listing clicks or smaller clicks. So this is joint work with Mina, Virginia, and Yunjin. So the focus of this talk is going to be the problem statement and motivation and the main results in this work. And I'll be deferring all of the technical details to the paper itself. So if you're interested, please look at our paper. So what's the problem of finding and listing a clique? So first I'll define what a clique is. So a clique is a fully connected graph. Um, so basically, for example, this is a um, clique on four nodes, and this is a clique on five nodes. So every pair of nodes are connected. So clique detection is the problem where you're given as input G and a parameter K, then you have to output one if the graph G contains a fully connected K clique and zero otherwise. So this is a very fundamental problem in computer science, and it was in fact one of CARP's original 21 and P-complete problems. So in this work, we want to focus on the case where k equals 0, 1. So what do I mean by this? Um, so here, k is actually technically allowed to grow to be as large as the graph itself, or basically the number of nodes itself. But in our work, we want to say k is always going to be some bounded number, whereas g can grow arbitrarily. So let's consider this problem. We want to list all the k cliques in a graph, where k here is 0, 1. So you can imagine like triangles, four cliques, or something like that, with a right, k is a fixed number. So if you want to list all the k cliques, an easy algorithm to do this would be the one where you would brute force over all possible sets of k nodes, and this would take O of n to the k tag. And in some sense, you, you can argue that this is in fact necessary, because if the graph is fully connected on its own, then you would need the graph itself would have O of n to the k cliques. So to even output every single click in the graph, you would need O of n to the k time. So this runtime is in some sense also necessary. So are we done? So this is not a very satisfying answer because, okay, so in this picture, if the graph has n to the k cliques, then sure, the runtime is n to the k. But what if the graph itself has much fewer than n to the k cliques? Then the lower bound goes away. So for example, if, um, if I know the graph only has O of one k cliques, turns out there's a way to list it and enter the omega, omega k over three times, where omega here is roughly 2.37. It's the current known runtime of matrix multiplication. So this is roughly 2k over three, and this is much better than enter the k. So just by just because the graph has O of one cliques, now we can capitalize on that to get a runtime much faster than enter the k. So in some sense, our, run, uh, our lower bound completely goes away. So suppose the graph has t cliques, can we somehow use this parameter t to get a better runtime? So for example, um, um, yeah. So basically, can we get a better runtime if we parameterize by t? And t here is the output size of the algorithm. So that's why we call this the problem of output sensitive listing. So output sensitive just means that the runtime can depend on the output size of the algorithm. OK, so what is known about this? So <clears throat> it's known that um, this was like a studied problem in the setting where k equal 3 or for the problem of listing triangles. So the work of BPVWZ um, basically shows an upper bound of n to the omega plus this complicated term. Just to make this parsable, I'll assume omega equal 2 for now. Um, we don't know how to prove omega equal 2, but this is a reasonable assumption to make. Hopefully, by the end of this slide, you're somewhat convinced. So the runtime, if you assume omega equal 2, boils down to n squared plus nt to the 2 third. So what's this n squared term here? So basically, the turns out if you can list O1 k cliques, that's the same as detecting whether the graph has any k cliques at all. So that means that this runtime is bottlenecked by the detection runtime of triangles. And the best algorithm we know of is n to the omega, or I guess you can think of n squared. But we also actually have an additional lower, conditional lower bound of n times t to the 2 third, um, which looks like this if you don't assume omega equal to 2. And this lower bound we have from both the problem of threesome by the work of couple of its at all, and also from APSP or zero weight triangle from the work of um, Vasilevska Williams and she. So notice here that this n times t to the two third terms is actually exactly the same as this term here when you assume omega equal two. And you actually can't hope for a better conditional lower bound unless you prove a new lower bound for omega. And the best lower bound we know for omega is in fact two. So just to simplify the rest of this talk and all the runtimes in this talk, I'm going to assume that omega equals 2. And I'll point out where we use this assumption. So if you assume omega equal 2, then this runtime of 
EPBWZ and the lower bound is actually completely matched. So that means we have a full understanding of listing triangles. Um, when, so are, are the output sensitive listing problem when K equals three. Um, I guess I also wanted to point out here, point out here that this plot isn't logarithmic scale in both axes. So, and this will be the case for all the plots in this talk. So what's the goal of this work? So we fully understand the setting of K equal three, but we have no idea what happens for K greater than equal four. So in this work, we wanna basically understand output sensitive click listing for more values of K. So the first contribution of our work is that we provide a new lower bound for this problem. So the first theorem we've shown is that basically for a graph with T, K clicks and N nodes, we need this complicated runtime here, assuming the zero K click hypothesis. So to parse this runtime, I just wanna say that when K equal three, this is equal to N times T to the two third, which is exactly the lower bound we had in the um, triangle listing case. case. So what is a zero K click hypothesis? It's basically the problem, so zero K click is a problem where you're given a graph with weighted edges, and you want to find a k clique whose edge sum is zero. So again, a trivial algorithm to do this would be to brute force over all k cliques and checking the sum. And in fact, this is the best algorithm we know. So this assumption basically says that the best algorithm we know for this problem is brute force. So now with this lower bound, we're in this win-win situation where if you're able to beat this runtime, then you get a better algorithm than brute force for this um, zero k clique problem. Or we now have a better understanding of the triangle uh, of the k click listing problem, assuming zero k click. So here we are in a win-win situation, and we basically extended this result from the case of k equal three to all k. <clears throat> okay, so now we've shown our lower bound. So what do we know in terms of algorithms? So in this work, we provide new algorithms for both four and five click listing. So they have these runtimes here as I've plotted, and just to parse this. Um, but yeah, again, um, our, our, this runtime I've stated here assumes omega equal two, and you can refer to the paper for the full runtime. So to parse this a little, the second term here is exactly the lower bound from the previous slide. And the flat line here is again, the detection runtime for both four and five click listing. So this detection runtime here, I'll call the k-click hypothesis. And the best runtime you know for this problem is roughly n to the two k over three or is this more complicated ex expression when k is not zero mod three. So if you plug in the um, three and, uh, four and five into this number, you get n cubed and n, n to the four respectively. So this is where the lower bound comes from. And so again, we have a full picture of what happens for four and five click listing. So this is very exciting. But when k greater than equals six, something interesting happens. <clears throat> so again, um, when, when t is very large, we can actually show an optimal algorithm for all k. This is very exciting. So just to concretely show what I mean, I'll focus on the case of six click. So here we get an um, optimal algorithm for T greater than equal N to the 4.925. So this is what our algorithm looks like. And the lower bound from our earlier slide says that the slope here is actually optimal. But if you look at the detection runtime for six click, it's actually N to the four. So this um, our blue line here doesn't actually meet this detection runtime. To, to solve this problem, we basically use a second algorithm and we will essentially, you can think of the algorithm as choosing the best um, of the two, two algorithms here, the, the lighter blue and the darker blue lines based on parameters. And intuitively, the second algorithm is basically going to perform triangle listing on six click instead. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat all the edges of this six click instance as nodes in a new graph. And if I list a triangle in this new graph, that's going to correspond to a six click in the original graph because you can expand out each node to an edge intuitively. So by doing this kind of trick, you can um, get the runtime all the way down to edge of the four, which is the detection runtime. And um, for those of you familiar with the best detection algorithms, this is basically what happens to the detection algorithms. And it's just interesting that to, to be able to achieve the lower bound, you have to do something different from the detection algorithms. So that was a mouthful, but I just wanted to give um, intuition to the people who are familiar um, with this line of work. So yeah, so that means that in this middle region here, we aren't able to have matching upper and lower bounds. So this leaves a very, really interesting open problem of matching this bound for all T or coming up with a stronger lower bound. So just to illustrate more examples, here are some plots for larger values of K. So if you want to list 50 cliques, so that means uh, cliques on 50, no like 50 nodes, then the runtime is rough, um, looks like this. 
where again, it matches the lower bound at this tail end. And again, for, for listing cliques on 102 nodes, you get a similar runtime. But I just want to point out that you get more steps in a sense, because you use like different different algorithms at different like parameters. So for example, maybe you'll be using triangle listing here and maybe like 10 click listing here, for example. So it introduces many steps in this, like many staircases in this um, um, graph. So again, this leaves an interesting open problem of matching the upper and lower bounds for all values of T. Okay, so that's basically uh, roughly what we know in terms of nodes. But what if we want to think about parameters beyond nodes? So far, we've considered n equal nodes and t equals is the number of k cliques. But another very natural parameter is the param um, is m, which is the number of edges in a graph. So if we graph as far as you can imagine, maybe the information about edges will be able to help you to get a better runtime. So and this is the only slide where I'll be talking about our detection algorithms. So in this um, work, we actually present a very general detection algorithm. And I want to highlight that the cool thing about this um, algorithm is that we actually improve upon existing algorithms for four and five clique in sparse graphs. And this is the first improvement in 20 years. So the work of Eisenbrand and Grandoni show this um, runtime for four and five clique in sparse graphs using rectangular matrix multiplication. So these numbers here are actually in terms of the current bounds of rectangular matrix multiplication from 20, uh, 2024, this work here. But if you use our algorithm with the current bounds, you actually get something better. So this very general framework that we give, which I hope is intu um, intuitive and like um, insightful for a general, more general um, understanding of detect detecting cake links. And this actually ended up improving some existing algorithms. So I think that's very cool. So I just wanted to highlight that in this um, slide, but also this is a very general detection framework that captures a larger setting. So the larger setting is basically the setting of listing cliques from smaller cliques, um, as alluded to in the title of the paper. So in real world graphs, as a thought experiment, what if we know that the graph has very few triangles? So we've talked about nodes and edges, but what if you also know triangle, something about triangles? So for example, here's some data from the work of Wang et al. Um, that, that analyzes the number of nodes, edges, and triangles in these um, graphs that have taken from network, real, world, real world networks. So if you look here, the number of triangles you'd expect to be roughly n cubed or m to the three halves. But like, for example, like these numbers here are definitely much less than that. Like the order of magnitude is much less than what you'd expect. So can we use the fact that K3, the number of triangles here is much less than you'd expect to get a better algorithm? So in more generally, if I know the graph has very few L cliques, can you do, can you list K cliques better? So the hope is that we can capitalize this kind of um, uh, property of real world graphs to get faster listing algorithms. So um, concretely, let me give a very um, concrete example here to illustrate why this might be helpful. So consider a graph that has n nodes, but very few triangles, O of one triangles, and the goal is to list one for clique. So algorithm one, the first thing you might try to do is use the nodes to list the four clique. And we've shown an optimal algorithm for this problem. So if you do this, you can list one for clique in time n to the omega plus one, or roughly n cubed. But there's another option here, which is to first say, well, okay, I want to list all the triangles in this graph first. And to list O of one triangles, as I've said earlier in this talk, you can do this in n to the omega time. And then now, because every four clique must contain four triangles, you can brute force over all combination of four triangles to list four cliques. So algorithm one takes n to the omega plus one time, but the second algorithm only takes n to the omega time because c here is a constant. So this um, brute force step takes only o of one time. So this is a very concrete example where somehow using the number of triangles seems to be very helpful to reduce the overall runtime of listing one for a clique. So the goal of this work is to basically get a better theoretical understanding of this problem by seeing whether our lower bounds and upper bound techniques um, extend to this setting. So in fact, we showed that our lower bound from before does in fact um, give a um, extend to the setting where you're parameterizing by delta L, the number of L cliques instead of the number of nodes. So under the same assumption as before, same lower bound techniques gives us lower bound. And our algorithm earlier for listing is also general enough to give an upper bound 
So as delta k approaches this value, which is delta l to the k over l, so this here is exactly the an upper bound on delta k. So as delta k approaches the maximum possible value, we get a runtime that's this complicated thing. But hopefully by pattern matching, it is easy to say that this, see that this actually does match our lower bound. So when t is large or delta k is large, you can achieve this lower bound. So to illustrate again, um, what happens in the full regime of t or delta k, we have that when the number of clicks is small, you can actually achieve the detection runtime achieved by our detection framework. And when t is very large, you get an optimal algorithm that matches our lower bound. But somewhere in the middle, you can um, something weird happens where there's a gap. And again, matching this gap or getting a better lower bound in this gap, even for this um, listing clicks for smaller click setting, is very interesting. OK, so that brings me to the end of the talk. So I just wanted to summarize all the results and all the problems we talked about. So the first result is we were able to show a new lower bound for the general problem of listing cliques or smaller cliques from the zero k clique hypothesis. So I want to um, emphasize here again that if you get a better algorithm, we get something better than brute force for zero k clique, and that would be really cool. Then we also present a very general algorithm technique for listing k cliques from l cliques, which is optimal in the case where the graph has many k cliques. And in the specific case of listing four and five cliques in terms of nodes, we actually get something that's optimal. And this was not no known before. We also pre present a very general de detection framework, which captures all, all k and l. So I highlighted the case of l equal 2 and l equal 1, but this actually extends to all k and l. And this actually ended up improving upon an old algorithm for, by Eisenman and Grandoni for the case where k equals 4 and 5. So hopefully, this detection framework presents a new way to analyze a detection problem in general. Um, okay, thank you very much for your attention.